Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Maker's Cave. And today I'm really excited about what we're going to be doing here. Um, as you know, we're already building the Back to the Future DeLorean by Eagle Moss. It's a 1-8 scale model and it's very big. Well, uh, they've released the Eleanor Mustang from Gone in 60 Seconds. Uh, it's the Mustang that Nicolas Cage coveted in that movie. Um, and the first shipment is here. It just got released. Like I said, this is the first shipment in. So we're going to be going over everything. We're going to be going over the uh, um, unboxing of the first shipment and putting it together. So we're going to dive right in here. We're going to open this up, see what's in here. Mustangs are one of my, is, is my favorite car. Um, I'm hoping to own one again before I leave this plane. All right, so the first thing out of here is, oh, this is, you know, there's a couple of things Eagle Moss always does with the first shipment of their models. One of them is a poster that you can hang up. So there's a poster. Did we autofocus there? Yes. So that's a poster of the Mustang. Okay, I can put that up on my wall next to my Farrah Fawcett Majors poster. I just dated myself. Next is what I got in here. Ah, I mean, what's what's in the box? What's in the box? Five points if you know what movie I just referenced. Oh, okay. Um, this is what I like about Eagle Moss, and I'm making sure this is in focus. Okay, this is a life-sized uh, picture of what the model is going to like when it's all done. That thing is big. If you can read down there, that's 22.9 inches. That's how long this thing is going to be. Basically 23 inches of die cast metal all lit up. All right, let me pull it up to here, see if I'm trying to give you some reference here. There you go. All right. And let's see if they got a good picture of it. Uh, I don't, I think this is a picture of the actual model. Right here, again, did we autofocus? Hey, everything's going well here today. All right, so as you can see, it's lit up. Um, I didn't think the fog lights lit up, but I guess they do. So that's pretty cool. So that's the paperwork that's in here. All the parts are in here. So if you're ready to ride, you guys ready to ride? Okay, let's ride. All right, then let's get to it and we're gonna start putting this together. All right, so first package of parts. <laughs> Much like the DeLorean, it looks like it's a tire and a rim. And the front grill. Okay, so a lot of different screws in here. There's four packs already. And much like the, if you saw the DeLorean build, um, I made screw containers out of these little tiny cosmetic cases. Okay, I use a Use the laser cutter to cut a hole in here, a bunch of holes. So this is going to hold 32. Uh, we're already up to six. No, what are we up to? Uh, da, 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 da. We're up to 11 in the DeLorean so far, and we're only like, you know, six issues into it. So I figured we needed something that might hold a little bit more screws for this one. So I made it a little bigger. Put that over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to null everything out. Get rid of that. Uh, which, in, uh, in case you don't know, knolling just means we're just going to lay everything out in a nice grid pattern so everything's all organized so we can get to it. So that's what we're going to do right now. And I apologize if the sound is not that great. If you watched the last DeLorean build, you'll realize I broke my wireless mic and I'm waiting for a replacement. So until then, I got to use the boom mic that's on the, on the camera. I tried using a wired camera, but it seems to be introducing a hum, which is probably more annoying than listening to me. Of the rim, some screws, and this looks like this will probably be the center to the to 
to the rim. Now much like DeLorean, you got to make sure you look into all these little spots because sometimes there's clear pieces and you miss them. Uh, if you look at the last DeLorean build, we I missed quite a few of them. That there. see in here already uh, see if I can, let me see in there. there's tiny little pieces in there so we got to make sure we don't lose those when we open this up and I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to keep everything right in here take the screws out so now let's uh, let's see we have some screws here we seem to have some options PS05 PS04 DS02 and DS02 okay so there's four packages but only two types of screws so we're going to label those up So that was DSO2. Now my wife said I went a little overboard with my labeling here, but I actually out of poster board, I cut little, uh, let's see who's focusing, cut little discs. I just put DSO2 because that's the name of that screw. And I'm going to put that on the bottom in here. And the other screw. Is a oh we got three of them I'm sorry DSO2 PSO4 PSO5 There you go. All labeled up. Okay, so now we're finally ready to get to some assembly. You know what I didn't see? A oh, here it is. They always include a screwdriver. So what we'll do is we'll bring the camera in so you can see exactly how this all goes together. Okay, we got you guys in closer now. So we're going to take out the instruction manual here. And it starts off with... One one, which is putting in the headlights. So we take this here and the headlights. They go in here. Oop, fell through. Should be identical, but that one seems to fit better there. Take the other one, put that here. And they both get held in with a DS02 screw. And we'll see if, yes, just like the DeLorean screwdriver, this is magnetized, which makes it a lot easier. Now, I was reading on one of the sites that makes the screws going in a lot easier if you use some tapping, three-in-one oil or some tapping fluid. I forgot to bring tapping fluid in from the shop when I started this. But I think going forward, especially with the DeLorean, we're going to try using some tapping fluid on some of these screws that go in here and the die cast parts, make it a little easier. Okay, so... go a lot of weight to this old die cast 
That's what I love about these models. Okay, so as long as we put screws in, which we did. Now it says we need to take these, looks like the fog lights. O1D. That has one written on it. This also has one written on it. This has two. And this has two. And then there's these little clear Looking ahead, they want me to put a clear light into one of these pieces. And I have a clear one here, but I do not have one there. So is that's leading me to believe that I, that I lose a piece? All right, you can't see me, but I'm off camera. And I am going through the boxes. Because I believe I've lost a piece. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop recording right now so I can start scrounging around on the floor looking for this missing piece. They either didn't send it to me or I wasn't careful when I opened up the box. All right, so we'll be right back. And as is typical with me, when I came back from searching the floor, I forgot to plug my bike back in. So once again, we're going to go back to narrating what's going on. All right, the next step is to take those lenses, the one of which I've lost, and you place them into the chrome uh, fog light frames that they have there. That's what I'm doing right now. They just press fit in there and they stay in there. as you can see right there. Now, as I put the lenses in the rest of them, what I'm planning on doing, since I lost that one clear one, I'm going to use the one good clear lens to make a mold, and I'm going to make a duplicate of it in resin. I'm actually going to make two so they match. And I'm just simply going to place them into those frames. Uh, I'll have a video on how we're going to do that uh, in a couple days. Once they're in place, you use a, a screw to secure it in the back. You have to do that on this side and the other side. And this will complete the lower fog lights, which are clear. Once the upper fog lights are secure, you can now work on the bottom ones. Or I may have that backwards. Let's put it this way. You put in the other set of fog lights. And again, you have to make sure that alignment pin goes in that hole. And then you can start securing them. So we're going to do that for both sides. And just like the other set of lights, you secure them in the rear with some screws. Okay. Everything is all screwed into place, and here is the finished grill. Old die cast, very heavy piece. This is going to be a heavy car when we're done. Now, the headlights do light up. That comes with a lighting package that comes later on in the build. But as I was noticing, the fog lights don't seem to light. I think when I fix the missing uh, uh, lens for the one fog light, I think I may add some micro LEDs into the back of the uh, fog lights so they light up as well. Now we're moving on to the tire. Put this up here. Now we're going to move on to the tire and the rim it looks like. Here's our screwdriver. And I'm taking it on faith that you can hear me. Here's the rim. Okay, so we have all the parts. Four PSO5 screws. Yeah, we have them. 
And we need four DSO2s. Yes, we do. All right. It wants me to take the tire. Oh, Jesus, this tire is rock hard. Now I see why they're doing it. They are, I don't know if you can see that. They want me to dunk this in water. That's 167 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, how does one figure that out? I, I, a tire is submerged in water for at least two minutes to soften so it soften it so that it can be fitted to the wheel more easily. To avoid burning your fingers, remove the tire from the water using tweezers. Ow! I burned my hand! Oh, isn't that a nice safety tip? Alright, so it looks like fitting the tire is put on after we do all this assembly. So what we'll do is we're not going to put this in the water right now. We will move on to here to this assembly. So we need part O2C, which is this one, and O2D. which is this one and goes together like this. Oh my God, it lined up on the first, first shot when they get held on with the PSO5 screws. One, two, and three. Okay, so we have that. Now they want to take O2B, which is this one, fit that onto here. Guess that will complete the rim. Oh, there we go. And they get the DSO2 screws, right? DSO2. Well, that was quick. Okay, so now what we have to do is we gotta take this, submerge this in some hot water, and then we'll put this on here. So let's go do that. Okay, so I went to the microwave. I took a mug, warmed it up for two minutes. Used my uh, thermometer there. 155 dunked it in there came back here now we're going to wait a couple minutes uh they said two minutes two very boring minutes later and we can take it out and attempt to put it on the rim After much searching, I finally remembered that I took the rim with me to the microwave when I was heating up the water. I have no idea why. So, after getting done soaking in the hot water, I took the tire out, and it's much more pliable now. So now it's just a matter of pushing the rim into the tire, or pushing the tire onto the rim. You will need to apply some pressure on this, even though the tire softened up in the hot water you need to put some pressure there to get that one side of the rim into the tire and then after that you can work it right around and get it in there and there's the completed tire with the rim all set and ready to go so that brings us to the end of our first video of putting together the Eagle Moss Eleanor Mustang from Gone in 60 Seconds. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. This model is just out. So you'll be able to, if, you're, if you've ordered it and you're following along, you'll be able to see exactly what uh, problems I come across. The only ones I came across today was one was, it was kind of hard kind of aligning those uh, chrome um, headlight uh, frames, uh, the fog light laying, uh, the, <laughs> the fog light frames into the uh, front grill 
but you just have to be patient with that. And of course we lost that, uh, not we, it's all me. I lost that uh, one clear um, lens for one of the fog lights, but that's gonna turn into another video because we're gonna show you how you can replace that. I'm gonna make another one out of clear resin and I'll show you how to make the mold for it and how we're gonna do that. And what I'll do is I'll make two of them so I can replace the other one so they look alike. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from it. Uh, if you did like it, hit like. Uh, if you like what you see on the channel, hit subscribe. I always take all the subscribers I can get, just like everybody else on YouTube. And if you want to be notified when more um, uh, videos come out, be sure to hit the bell too. Until the next time, thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave. I'm Steve.